Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, head of Google Enterprise Australia, New Zealand, Stuart McLean. I always like that you're getting applause and you haven't even done anything yet. That's fantastic. A um, couple of things. I always like to start these events. A wise man once told me, know your audience. Okay. So a couple of questions for you. How many people have used Google.com in the last week? Yeah. Those who have got your hands down, we know you're, you're lying, right? How many people have got a Gmail account? So preaching the converted, that's good. How many people have an iPhone? Apple, great product. Yeah, anybody got an Android? Excellent. I think that was nearly about 50-50 there, that was pretty good. How many people have got Blackberry? Okay, you'll catch up eventually, okay? <laughs> we'll get there. Um, so my job today is to introduce, uh, to in welcome you, and also just to position what we're going to talk about today. So first of all, we have this concept called Gone Google, and what does that mean? Well, Gone Google is a movement. If you think about now we've over, and we'll talk about this a bit, we have over three million companies have gone Google. It took us five years to get the first two million of those companies. You saw in the video, gone Google means an enterprise has moved to Google's products. Five years for the first two million. The last million took us one year. So I'm not very good at arithmetic or mathematics, but that to me is, is, is actually going faster. So that's what gone Google is. Um, Monash University, you might have seen some of these adverts around uh, the uh, airports, billboards, etc., etc. If you haven't, then our marketing guys haven't done a good job. If you have, then fantastic. You now know what Gone Google means. And we'll talk a bit about that today. So, our roadshow today is first of many. Uh, this is the first of a global rollout of uh, Google roadshows. And I guess our topic today, the future of work. But first of all, I just want to talk to you about Google. Everybody knows Google.com. We all use it every day. Google started search and advertising. Fantastic business for us. Go to bed at night, wake up in the morning, and there's more money in the bank. Who wouldn't want a business like that? Then we've got into display advertising. And a lot of you may see this on websites as you, go, as you surf the net. You see uh, display ads. Then we bought this small company called YouTube. Everybody, anybody used YouTube? Pretty cool company. Do you know now there's 48 hours of content an hour gets uploaded to YouTube? Now, where does that go? Right. That's scary stuff. Then mobile. We talked about we released this little operating system called Android. Now the fastest growing operating system on a, a smartphone mobile device in the world. I think at last count, 300, 400,000 devices activated a day. A day. All right, the world's going mobile. The mantra inside Google for our developers is mobile first. Everything we do now, we develop for mobiles first, then we make it work on the web. Okay, so that's where we're going. But today we're going to talk about enterprise and Google Enterprise. How many of you have heard of Google Enterprise before you came in the room? Yeah, that tends to be pretty typical. At least, at least the summer, yeah. I've had audiences where everybody just sat there and went, what? Who are they? So let me talk about Google Enterprise. We started six years ago with a product called Search, a search appliance. Has anybody seen these bright yellow boxes look like cheese? Basically, what we've done is taken the search from Google.com, put it in a box that you can stick inside your firewall. It gives you Google.com search experience inside your organization. Slightly diff different algorithms because we search content that's not connected as opposed to the web is all connected content. That's where we started six years ago. Then we moved into geospatial, Google Earth, Google Maps. If you ever look to buy a house or rent a house in, in Australia, which I presume is mostly in the room, you've used Google Maps on realestate.com. Google Earth, you can download. And we're now selling Google Earth products to large organizations in Australia. For example, Ergon Energy just recently bought one of our new Google Earth products. They're going to fly planes all over the Queensland and upload imagery into the cloud. Business case for that? was the ability to inspect telegraph poles without going out on the road. Cost $90 now, move to Google Earth, do it online for nine. They are the type of business cases we're seeing that enables businesses to go Google. And Google Apps, last but not least, this is going to be the topic we talk about today. And we'll go into that in a bit more detail. I won't steal Doug's, Doug's thunder. 
So Google's mantra is organize and manage the world's information. Google Enterprise, all we do is stick in the word business. It's a very large percentage of the world's information sits behind firewalls. And that's organizations that you represent today that have got a lot of that business. So just a shout out to some of our Australian customers. From a search perspective, Westpac, Coles, Foxtel, uh, Google Earth, NRMA, Telstra, Qantas, and Apps, APT, Flight Center here today, um, Ray White, et cetera, et cetera. And we'll talk a lot more about these over the, the, the coming hour or so. So I talked about this, three million businesses have gone Google. We're signing up 3,000 a day worldwide. So I think it's about time we updated this slide. It must be getting close to four million. But it's, it's growing at exponential rate. The key takeaway for that is, this is not something that we dreamt up yesterday. This is not something that two or three companies are doing. This is a movement. It's happening. The question is whether you want to get on board or you want to sit back and let your competitors do it. That's the main question you've got to be asking yourself. The cloud changes everything. How many times have we heard the, you know, the word cloud's overused? My cloud, your cloud, hybrid cloud, private cloud, cloud in the basement. It's all getting a bit cloudy, right? So you'll start to hear a lot of messages coming out of Google around 100% web. Any device accessing an infrastructure in the cloud. And by the way, some of the stats, Google's fourth largest, I think we're fourth or third, fourth largest server manufacturer in the world. Do you know how many we sell? None. We sell none. All that does is go in our data centers. We also run the third largest IP network in the world. And all that does is connect our data centers together from points of presence in every country in the world. So when we talk about the cloud changing everything, from a Google perspective, we're saying embrace the power we have, embrace the capabilities we've built as opposed to power, is the way we can purchase and do things is exponentially cheaper than any other business in the world can do. There's a couple of quotes on there of what Google Apps allows you to do and just, you can do new things because the product's online. You're no longer constrained by the barriers of a desktop PC or a device not connected to the internet. So, probably heard enough of me rambling on um, today. So, I'm going to introduce Doug in a second, who's going to be our keynote today, and we'll do a couple of demos, That's, and then we'll move to a coffee break about four o'clock. Um, we'll have a customer panel. So we always like in Google, we're very transparent. Don't believe what we say. We'll bring customers up to tell you what they think, and we'll, I think we're going to have roving mics, right? So you can ask questions, and we'll keep that interactive, which should be good. And last but not least, Scotsman in me, this is the best part, free beer, okay? So that's kind of where we'll get to. Before we go there, we're in our customer panel, we've got Flight Center, large user of Google Apps, Ray White, Moe's Mobile, Monash University, and Mortgage Choice. So we've tried to get a cross section of our companies, some small, some large universities, so we can get a different perspective on how they've used our products, what they thought of them, what the experience was like dealing with Google, and we haven't bribed them, okay? So they will tell you the truth, will you? And last but not least, before I put on the Doug, uh, I'd just like a shout out to say thanks to our partner expo. We have a lot of our partners over here in the foyer. Hopefully you've talked to them already. They, the key around what we are doing in Google is building this ecosystem around Google Apps. Everything we do in Australia and New Zealand, we do it through our partners. We build and focus on building great products, and our partners help us implement that and make it work inside your organization. So hopefully you use time during the break and during the cocktails section to talk to our partners and uh, see how they can assist you go Google if you're interested. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Doug Farber. He's the managing director of Asia Pacific for Google. Doug and I, we've kind of both, both been in this business a while, been involved in software as a service now for over 11 years. Doug spent a lot of that at salesforce.com. He's been in Google for over two years now, Doug. So it's equivalent of about 14 years in any other company. It's a little dog year, I don't know. Um, Doug's gonna come up and we're gonna do demos as well, so we want to show you some of this product. So, so it is real, it's all live, it's connected to the internet. So hopefully the internet connection's good in the hotel. All right. uh, he's gonna be assisted by Neil and Isham. So as, as Doug talks through and starts to say things, you, two guys that jump up, they'll kind of show you all working. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Doug Farber. Thank you, 
Thanks, Stuart. Cheers. Well, thanks very much, everyone. This is an amazing turnout. So really, really excited to be here this afternoon. And thanks, thankfully, the rain has held off. And looks like a full house, over 300 people here today. So as, as Stuart mentioned, my name is Doug Farber, and I look after Google Enterprise. I've been here for about 18 months or so, so it is, but it does feel like about 20 or so years. Um, and I, 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 it's had an amazing journey. And what we want to talk to you today about is the, the future of work. Sorry. And I, come, I have a pretty unique uh, perspective on this. I've, I've kind of been following this cloud thing that Stuart mentioned. Um, I actually came out here to start Salesforce about eight or nine years ago. And I remember our first event was at the DSRD building in Grosvenor House across the street. And we couldn't afford, it was uh, one, two of us, and we couldn't afford a seminar. So we actually kind of piggybacked on the government. And we rocked into a room, and we were four or five people and a dog and some crickets were sort of there, and we were talking about the cloud. And it's really gratifying to see you know, hundreds of people here, not just talking about it, but actually living it and seeing all these hands being raised. So you know, having watched this, I started my career at, at Anderson Consulting. And you know, we had a, a, a vision at that stage in the early 90s, you know, what the future of work's going to be like. And you know, unleashing all these, these hordes of young, energetic people and training them up and sending them out on, onto, into business. Then I joined a little data, database company called Oracle. Um, and they just had to restate earnings, and they were the number four in the marketplace. And they took on this new guy that was looking after their operations, and he changed the culture as well. And he had a really big vision about the future of work. And again, Oracle went on a rocket ship, and that was pretty amazing. And at Oracle, I, I met this bombastic six foot five, um, long haired, sort of um, very animated speaker. And, and I met him in Hong Kong, and he went out, and I remember sitting down at a table with him in 1996, and he talked about, you know, why can't using enterprise applications be as easy as buying a book on Amazon, right? And that was kind of the design principle back then. And that guy was Mark Benioff. And I ended up joining Mark in 2000 with Salesforce and then coming over here in 2002. And it's, just, it's been astounding to watch this transformation. And what we want to talk about today is how not only this is, this is transforming the workplace and making you more productive and more collaborative, but how this can drive your business. And that's, that's a truly amazing thing that we're seeing. So just take a step back. I thought, I thought we'd just paint a picture today and, and, and take a, a slightly visionary view. The internet's been with us for 20 or so years. And so how many of you remember your, your first download of, of a Netscape browser? It's pretty amazing. So I think it was like the Monica Lewinsky scandal or something, and it popped up, and you had all these funky like, links and all the rest of it. It was this amazing new, basically a publishing world. And I'll think about today and how fundamentally that, is, that has transformed. That, the internet is, doesn't, even, doesn't even resemble what it used to be back then. It's now this social, mobile, incredibly dynamic, multimedia experience that we just seamlessly move through from device to device. And nowhere is that more evident than when I take my four-year-old into, into an Apple shop, and she just walks up to an iPad, and she just flicks around on e-books and does the Angry Birds thing, and she doesn't even think twice about it. I'm sitting there still trying to turn the thing on all the time. So this is intuitive now, and it's actually become ingrained in, in our society, this, this new medium. And it's making, it more, making us more easier to work and, and more productive. So again, the implications in the workplace are profound. We, there's a study by McKinsey that talks about you know, the new jobs that are being created in this, in this knowledge economy are for knowledge workers. Um, you know, these, these people need to collaborate. They need to, to be working together. They need to be actively problem solving. They're not being given tasks and asked to do them in a linear fashion. They need to go off and, and find different uh, types of inputs to be able to solve their issues. But the, the other thing about it is I'm, I'm always going to these seminars and there's this constant questioning about what do we do with these Gen, Gen Y guys, you know, these, these young generation of workers that are growing up around us using all this technology. And the reality is, is that for them, work is not a place. It's an activity. And it doesn't matter necessarily where they, where they are or how they do it. If they could be on you know, a, a subway train or they could be on the, the Manly Ferry coming across to the CBD, go on an airplane. But they expect to, to work together and collaborate and to operate in what we call tribes. And you know, this, this provides a lot of challenges for us as managers and, and as leaders in business. So, but it also is a fantastic opportunity. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So again, we, we talk about this, that we have these mobile IT nomads, these people that kind of evolve, that evolve around the, uh, the workplace. And they're, they're contract workers or they're you know, temporary workers in, in organizations. And they're being facilitated by things like hoteling and distributed computing. So a lot of these things strike fear in, in the hearts of, of some CIO um, folks. But the reality is, is that we, if we can unleash that power and, and, and 
manage it and, and, go, and nurture it, it provides profound benefits as well as, uh, as some revenue generating opportunities as well. So that's what we're, we'd like to chat about today. And there's a great example here in Australia. Is anyone, anyone familiar with freelancer.com? Anyone ever used this site before? So there are these sorts of sites all over the place. This one is particularly unique and noteworthy. If you look at the numbers, it's astounding. They've got 2.5 million professionals that are in this network all over the world. Lots of them here in Australia, but they could be all over Asia and India and in, in the US and Europe. And they're all contending for work. And you know, so far, they've, they've landed you know, about a, a million or so projects or so. And this, and this organization has generated 80 or $90 million in a very, very small company. And they don't even have a real office. So think about the implications of that. And then, of course, Thomas Friedman in The World is Flat talks about this idea that in the future, every job is going to be competed for by people all over the world. This is just the beginning. We need to be able to facilitate these kinds of work environments and these kinds of workers. So what we want to ask today is, as you look at your businesses and as you think about where technology is going and you see the, the, social, the social networking revolution and the, the revolution of mobility, you know, is this the way that your company is working? And is the way that your company is working? So that's what we want to explore today and talk about you know, kind, of, kind of Google's approach and where we come from. So like, like any good Google employee, I went off and, and went to the search engine. I, I, I couldn't find Bing, so I ended up using this one. So um, I went into the future work. And there, were some great, there were some great videos, but I, couldn't, I just started to reflect on my own experience. And it was, you know, that, that to me really epitomized what it's about. And you know, one of the great things about having been at Google for a relatively short time is I, I really do appreciate it. And, I have a little bit of gray hair, in case you didn't notice it, and I, I, I'm sort of adult supervision within our organization, and I can reflect on some of my experiences, and, and it is astounding, you know, the, the degree of collaboration, you know, the workspaces that we're in. Has anybody here been to our office in Piermont? You know, I'd like to have you over there for some, uh, for some foosball and air hockey, but it's, uh, you know, it's an amazing environment, and a lot of it you know, looks all fun and, and jovial and the rest of it in like a big volleyball game, but the reality is there's an incredible amount of technology and sophistication and process behind, you know, th that drives this magic. And it's funny because I just came back from Mountain View, and sometimes I feel like, you know, we're in a petting zoo in Google because we actually go there and we have all these busloads of kids coming up and, and, or companies showing up and trying to figure out you know, how to get the pixie dust of Google you know, because we're, we're known for our innovation. And it's really it's gratifying for us. And, and one of the th reasons why we're here today is we've managed to take that pixie dust and bottle it up in, in our Google Apps products. And lots of you in the audience and hopefully lots more of you are going to be able to use that yourselves. So fundamentally where we came from was you know, we, we started out on the internet, obviously, but we were back in the late 90s, you know, the early part of the century. And you know, we're a very, very small business, basically a startup from Stanford. And uh, the guys needed to go off, and they needed office productivity tools. We needed to be able to communicate and collaborate. And we just weren't happy with the tools that were out in the marketplace. So we built this stuff from the ground up. So what, what you're seeing today is the byproduct of a zero to $30 billion company that manages 20,000 people. So the proof is very much in the pudding around how you know, we, we eat our own dog food, we drive our own business around this, and we've also taken some of the most popular applications in the world and given them to the, to the workplace. So again, I, you know, my, my heritage is, is from salesforce.com, been doing you know, this cloud stuff for 11 or 12 years. And it's interesting, today when, when people go off and when they, when they build applications for their businesses, you know, th there is no more notion of building it on a mainframe or a mini or even a client server that the, the core design principle needs to be the cloud. You, when you build your new, your new systems, fundamentally 99% of them are going to need to be cloud-based. And that's how you should be driving your design. And again, it's not just us or IT vendors being self-serving about this. Folks like The economists, The economists are talking about you know, the rise of the cloud is going to profoundly change the way people work and they operate. So I think we already, a lot of you know these benefits. You wouldn't be here if you didn't at least, if you weren't at least curious about them. But the fact is that we've, we've taken these things and manifested them in a, in a pretty incredible business. So this is a, a duplicate slide to Stewart's, but it is worth repeating that three million companies have already done this. A million just in the last year. That's a company every 14 seconds. So people are, are adopting this. And, and the other amazing thing that I find is there are like little pockets of, of companies and industries that this is just like de rigueur. It's, if you're a startup in Silicon Valley, you're on Google Apps. 
You, you don't think about buying a server or you don't you know, buy a Microsoft Exchange or whatever else. You just get up and running immediately in a matter of minutes on Google Apps. You know, everybody straight away wants to use low cost, easy to use, real time collaborative environments. So again, I, I saw everyone raise their hands and, and when, when Stuart asked about the usage of Google. And I think you know, lots of you use a search engine and using Gmail. Now what Google Apps is about is taking all that goodness, those applications that you know, hundreds of millions of people already use in the consumer world, taking them across and making them enterprise ready. Security, performance, reliability, and scalability that people expect in the enterprise. And you know, it, the key to this, the key notion here is about adoption. You know, people don't want to learn new products. They want to have intuitive interfaces. They don't want to take training classes. They want to take their experiences that they had in the consumer world and directly um, transpose them into the, into the workplace. So great example. We, we want to spend a lot of time today talking and celebrating our customers. You know, we're going to have a panel a little bit later, and Richard's going to go and, and uh, have them tell their stories. But it is, it's really critical to, to understand this, that you know, uh, Bilo, Super Bilo, which is a, a retailer in the US with, with a presence down here, you know, they bought Google Apps. They, they needed to save some money, and they had some, you know, some contractual issues with, with, with their previous vendor. But they wanted to get out there and, and give their people tools that they were already familiar with. It, makes, it made their lives easier. They didn't have to train them. You know, this was a no-brainer decision for a company like Bilo, you know, multi-thousand user organization. So how many of you use Google Apps outside of Gmail? Cool, good stuff. Well, it's interesting because I, I think people don't realize the vast array of functionality that's, that's involved in Google Apps. And they always are incredibly surprised when I tell them that all this stuff is available for effectively 50-ish US dollars per user per year. So that's kind of basically a cup of coffee a month, if you like, depending on what your coffee place is. So you've got Gmail, which is the anchor, which is what most of you use. But we also have this the Google Docs, which we're going to show a demonstration around, which is our presentation software, our spreadsheets, and our word, and our word processor. We've got calendaring, which is incredibly sophisticated and, and, a, and a great use of the cloud. Um, Google Sites for setting up uh, websites, video, talk, groups, Postini. So this amazing array of, of products that, that's being sold at, a, at an amazing clip. So how do we help evolve the future of work? You know, it's helped drive us as a company to $30 billion and, and global presence and a, and a very strong brand and, and a great footprint. How can we help give you some of that magic pixie dust? So again, the three million companies, lots of them are small, lots of them are medium, but a lot of big end of town folks are also making this switch. You know, every single day, you know, dozens of times a week, I'm sitting in front of CIOs that are saying they need a change. You know, they, they're tired of looking across the table at another vendor who's you know, putting in front of them uh, you know, contractual terms they're not happy with or functionality they're not, they don't really need. And they want to change. So companies like Virgin America, like Motorola, National Geographic, Avago, we talked about Flight Center and AAPT here. You know, these, are, these are major organizations with multi-thousands of people all making this decision and this choice. So we're talking to them all the time. And the thing that keeps coming back at us and what we want to address today are you know, what we find are the, co the common denominator issues around business today. Forget about our products or anyone else's products. We're all wrestling with fundamentally the same sorts of things. So we see these devices. We see mobiles and tablets and the rest. How do we apply that in, in our business? We have teams. Lots of them are distributed. How do we enable those teams rather than just the individuals within them? We've got tons of, of information coming at us, you know, gigabytes in, in a lot of cases, and all, all kinds of multimedia. How do we manage that and make people productive with it? How do we drive relationships, not just contacts? How do we make IT not just invisible, but, but strategic, more strategic th than it currently is? And then this whole idea of disposable devices. So what I'd like to do is just kind of talk through these, and then we'll kind of intersperse this with some, with some demonstrations. Because I think it's really, it's really important. You know, having come from Salesforce, this stuff needs to be tangible. It's, it's actually quite tactile. You need to actually get in there. And it's amazing watching people the first time that they share a document or collaborate on the web, the light bulbs pop. Because this is just a better way to work. So mobility first. You heard Stuart talk about the, the astounding growth of Android. So I've heard numbers anywhere up to a half a million activations a day on the Android platform. So we need to think of these devices, irrespective of what they are, as just portals to data. It doesn't matter if I'm on a ferry on my, on my Android or if I'm on my desktop or laptop or tablet. I'm accessing the same data up in the cloud. 
And how do we give people access to this information anytime, anywhere? And you know, the other thing is, if you'd shown this graph 10 years ago, the people would have thought that you were smoking something, right? Who would have thought that the mobile smartphone shipments would ever pass the PC? So if you're a conventional PC uh, vendor out there um, that, that's, that's sitting on a very large franchise, I, you've got to be a little worried about this slide, right? And the reality is, is that, you know, we, I was just at a, an event with, with Optus, they're already seeing this happening here in Australia. The fact is they have shipped more smartphones, they're seeing more shipments of smartphones than there are PCs here in Australia, and it's happening worldwide. So this is not, this is not just a, a fad or a passing phase, this is happening at, at an incredible rate. And again, 50% of uh, mobile penetration here in Australia, people, got, people using the internet on a regular basis on their phones. That's really powerful. 41% um, is equipped with a tablet. And we were just talking, it's amazing. The next time you go into a, uh, in, through the airport, watch the end users, it's really interesting. When you see people on Androids or Blackberries, they're all sort of hunched over and they're kind of typing away furiously and they're all kind of wrinkling their suits and the rest of it. And you look at the tablet guys and they're just kind of cruising and, and doing the tablet dance. And you see, it's just a cooler way to work. You just, it feels a lot more intuitive. It feels like you're actually getting stuff done. You're, you're more relaxed. You're sitting back a bit more. And it, it's, it depends on your mindset, right? You have, all, you have different devices for different, different stages of the day. So we're, we're seeing that in an incredible clip, you know, the, the uptake of the tablets. And then it's not just that we're playing with gadgets for gadget's sake. I mean, I'm sure lots of you are playing Angry Birds on a regular basis. I know I do. But the fact is a 2.x productivity enhancement. I mean, this, is, this is amazing. We're hearing companies um, telling us about, giving us feedback that their people are, are producing a lot more documents. They're, they're producing a lot more output. They're, they're pushing revenue. They're meeting more customers because they're more mobile. So the second point that, that we want to kind of emphasize, and, and the second thing that comes up regularly, is that we've got people all over the world, or people all over Australia, or even all over Sydney, and they may not be sitting in the same place. We need them to collaborate more effectively. The, the, this notion of individual productivity, of just having a really cool tool to author great stuff, doesn't work. You need to, you need to be able to share that, collaborate on it, you know, edit in real time together. And I don't think there's any more clear differentiator between the design principles of Microsoft versus, versus Google. So Microsoft is a, is a fantastic company. It's a, it's a great 20th century company. They come up with great products. They have you know, this amazing franchise that has driven you know, some of the most in incredible investments in technology. The Office suite is, is, is amazing. You, know, you can actually write a document with 217 fonts. So how many fonts do you use when you write a document? Is the question. So what, what has basically happened is they've gone up the stovepipe on the left-hand axis around individual authoring. And one of the reasons when we were way back in our design phase within within Google was we realized this, that there, there, there becomes a, a, a point of diminishing returns on features that you don't need 217 fonts. I might use three or four or five, maybe 10 if I'm feeling wacky. But the reality is I need to go off and go and, and, uh, and encourage collaboration and build in facilities in, in our tools to go off and, and, and drive that. So we recognized that we were going to reach feature parity over time. And we were going to get to the 90, 10, 80, 20 rule, whatever you like. But we thought that our end users were going to want us for the collaboration aspects. And it's, and it's coming true in, in a big hurry. So the other thing that we're able to leverage is the technology that is only possible with massive amounts of infrastructure, leveraging the cloud. So you heard Stuart talk about the fact that you know, we're the fourth largest server um, provider and, and manufacturer. We've got amazing facilities all over the world. Think about the practical application of that. So I can talk into a phone in English, into a Google Translate, and, that, and my conversation, my sentences, will be translated in real time in Chinese on any device that I like, as long as I'm using the Google Translate application. That's stunning. You know, 10 years ago, that's science fiction sort of stuff. But the only way that you can do it is through the cloud. The only way, and the guy's going to come up and show you a collaborative document where you can create a spreadsheet or a presentation, and you can have guys all over the world editing in real time together on the same document and collaborate. In a, in, a, in a very, very uh, fast fashion. And again, only through the cloud is that possible. Invoking a video chat using Gmail, cloud-based technology. So again, people, they hear about the cloud. I think it's, the onus is on us as, as a vendor and as, as Google to talk about how you manifest that, that into business benefit. 
And so it's not just us. And it, again, it's gratifying because it sort of felt like back, you know, a few years back at Salesforce that we were thumping on a, on a, on a loud drum around these benefits, but, and, and Google as well. But it, it's come around to conventional wisdom. So the big uh, consultancy houses are, are acknowledging this, that there are tangible benefits around going to the cloud. This is not a phase. It helps with your speed of access to knowledge. It helps with your access to uh, internal experts, employee satisfaction, awareness, marketing costs. You know, it helps reduce your communication costs and your marketing and lots of, lots of different areas that are tangible. And, and uh, you know, every day we talk to customers that ask us for business cases and we can confidently go back and deliver those, uh, very compelling ones. So what I'd like to do now is, is introduce my uh, colleagues, Anil Sabarwal and Hisham Alawi, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, Hisham, Doug. Is, Hisham is a real live Generation Y. Welcome. <laughs> All right. Good afternoon, everyone. So um, I'm Anil Sabarwal. I head up our product management team for enterprise here in Australia and New Zealand. And hi, everyone. I'm Hisham Malawi. I'm an enterprise marketing manager covering Asia Pacific. So the most important thing to realize as we say that is all salespeople have left the stage. And we can actually now tell you the truth. So we've, we got rid of Doug. And we're actually going to talk to you about some of the things that our products really can do and give you a demonstration. And uh, fortunately, it gels pretty well with the messaging that, uh, that Doug provided. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump in here onto uh, the Mac. We're going to show uh, Hisham here is just, if we can get it on both machines, please, uh, both. Uh, projectors? Great. All right, so here we got Hisham just going ahead, logging into uh, his Google Docs account. So as, you, as Doug talked about, everything we do here is in the cloud, which has some tremendous benefits in terms of accessibility, no matter where you are. Um, and the first thing what we're going to show you is a team collaborative site. So one of our products in the Google Apps uh, product suite is Google Sites. And this is um, really about building collaborative environments and workspaces where you and the rest of your organization can work together. These things are all about really quick collaborative environments, creating them, inserting maps, putting in spreadsheets, creating documents. Think of it as a resource portal. But the advantage of this compared to things like Lotus and SharePoint is you don't need an IT person to set this up for you, figure out the storage, help train your employees. This is up and running. This was created in a matter of about 30 seconds based on a template that we provide, so you go ahead, pick a template, create a site, embed the calendar, get some information. You can see here we have a Google spreadsheet that actually has some project management information. So it's really about getting your organization up and running pretty quickly. So what, what would we uh, jump into that spreadsheet, Hisham? Yep. Now, we talked about mobile first. That doesn't only mean Android. I got an iPad here. For those of you who can see, we're not going to fake this. This really is an iPad. Uh, it's an iPad 2. It's actually quite nice. So, Are you selling it? I, uh, no. No, I really like it, actually. I, uh, I got this little Bluetooth keyboard case when I was in the US. It's actually quite nice. So we're going to um, show here Hisham in the spreadsheet. We're going to put the iPad up on this one, if we could, please. All right. So yeah, iPad. I'm going to go here, just quickly launch the browser. So what you can see here is Hisham is going ahead and actually going to be editing the spreadsheet on this side. I'm here. You can see that on my side it says sharing. Hisham has opened the spreadsheet. I can go in here, and I'm going to just you know, click over here into one of these cells. Um, Go ahead and type, and I'm going to go this. This is a nil. All right. You can see that's there. Now that's coming in there on that side as well. So what we're talking about here is kind of single source of truth. Now, uh, Jeremy Wood, one of our colleagues as well, has jumped into the presentation. So why don't you guys just kind of type away, change some things, move some graphs around. Basically, the idea is you get away from that whole attachment thing. Do you remember when? Um, You'd send out a document or a spreadsheet to your company, and then oh, you know what I'm talking about. See, you, you get the, you send it out, right? And then uh, everyone goes, oh, this is really interesting. They make their edits and they send it back to you, and they put their initials at the end, project document underscore as edits, and they send it back to you. And then you get seven more of these things, and you sit there and you're like, oh, how do I merge all this content together? I got to pull it together, and then, and then you send out version two, but some person decided that they took too long with version one, and you're already on version four, when they send you edits back on version one, and you're trying to figure out how do you pull all these things together. The idea around Google Spreadsheets is really collaborative workspaces. In fact, we can, we can even just have a, have a chat in here, right? Yep. We can go ahead and pull up that. He, he can go ahead and have a conversation with me. You can see I'm going to see in the upper right-hand corner here, oh, we're going to actually going to start to see some chats come up, and I can pull down.
So we go. How's my Wi-Fi doing? Let's see if you see that up on yeah, yours. There you that. go. All right, yeah. now I'm in. Um, and, and we can actually start taking advantage of the power of the cloud. So um, why don't we bring the Mac up on both screens, and why don't you quickly actually go ahead, Hisham, there, and, and use uh, Google Finance. Anyone know what Google's trading at today? Let's see. How, am I, how are the options doing? Where, where's uh, it's Google Finance? Can we get uh, the Mac up on this screen as well, please? What's 520 that? at the What's latest. 520. Balance. All right. Good time to buy. All right, so you can see that we can actually use the power of the cloud to actually pull information in real time and bring them into these actual, actual sheets. Let's, let's now start talking about Google Documents. I want to show you these same type of things. So why don't we pop into Google Docs, uh, and let's, let's create a new document. Now, um, before I can edit this, you're going to need to share this with me, right? Yep. All right, so what are you creating here? Project, design, OK, I like it. Sounds good. Sounds important. Now, again, the That's whole what I was going for, important. What, sorry, what's that? Never mind. Okay. Um, the advantage of Google Docs, again, around collaboration is this aspect of permissions. So how many times have you sent something to somebody and then you realized, oh, crap, I shouldn't have done that? And then you hit that little button that says recall, and they get a nice email? This is my favorite thing. They get the email that says, Anil would like to recall this document he sent you. What's the first thing you do? You look at the document, right? Because you're not supposed to have it, so of course you want to look at it. Right? And the way that Google Docs works is based on permissions. And it's based on whether they're private, they're public, how you want to share them within your organization. And at any point, you can revoke access and give access back. So it's a really powerful system. So you've, you've given to me, I'm Bob in this scenario. Yep. Um, so we're going to go ahead and if you can switch down to the Elmo, please. This, uh, this monstrosity here that is this projector is called the Elmo. Um, I think they figured if they gave it a Sesame Street name, it would be more appealing. But uh, so here we got the Google Docs native application. So we do build applications natively for mobile phones and tablets. Here we've got the, uh, the Google Docs app. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to pull up my items. And hopefully that item that Hisham has shared with me is up there. There we go, project design doc. So you can see on that side, he's in the document. On this side, I'm actually just going to pull it up right here on my mobile phone. It's going to give me a view of that document based on kind of currently where it's at. And I can go ahead and I can actually edit that document. So I'm just going to hear right here on my mobile phone. I'll go in here and I'll, I'll click edit. See how well I can type. Timeline is, no. Awesome. All right, we got that up there? Yeah, we do. Right, so you can see that this is getting in there. I, that was Doug, I was typing there, I wasn't swiping. So hopefully when I get back to the tablet, it'll be more fun. But you can also do a couple other pretty cool things, right, like text-to-speech. So let's do this. This is me talking. Oops, too early. Let's try that again. This is me talking. Right. Should be on both sides. It is indeed. There you go. So again, the idea of really changing the way people's environments work. This is mobile devices, desktop environments, no matter where you are, really being able to kind of leverage the power of that. Now, uh, one of the other things that we're going to show, why don't we uh, pull up a document that has some comments in them? So we talked about the power of the universal source of truth. And so what I want to do is um, I'm going to ask you guys if we could switch back to the iPad, please. And I'm just going to go ahead and pop into my email here. And so Hisham's going to open up a document here that actually has a comment. And one of the most interesting aspects of comments is if, if you think about the scenario that you have in Google Docs or in Word, when you write a document, someone adds comments, they typically email you back and go, oh, I've edited the document, go back to it. But there's really powerful elements within Google Docs in the discussion. So for example, he sent me a comment here that says, what's the latest six month forecast? And I've actually received an email on that. If I go ahead and I pull that up. You can see that I've received an email here on this side from Hisham, what's the latest six month forecast? I'm just gonna go ahead and reply to that. And I'm gonna say it's, oops, 10,000 units. I'm gonna hit send. If we could switch back to the Mac on both of those, please. Bam. 
what you can see is actually right there in the document itself without ever having to go into it or having to actually make any edits right there from an email, I just reply and it adds the document comment right back into the document. So it's a really powerful way of actually interacting with material when you're on the road or on any device and again, always the single universal source of truth. So with that, what we want to show you, we want to end here before we hand it back to Doug um, with a little video that actually shows you some of the power of the cloud when you're working with uh, presentations and have different people collaborating together. So let's cue up that video. Very cool. I love that, that demo. That is very cool. How many of you have ever done a presentation like that? <laughs> cool. So we heard about collaboration, and we, we, we saw the, the demonstration and some really powerful stuff, especially the mobility, which I thought was, was uh, especially compelling. You know, being able to be on a mobile device and, and actively collaborating with somebody in a remote location and, and contributing to a document. I mean, this is incredible. The other issue, we, we, we were talking about the, the uh, elements that people are coming to us with out in the marketplace and, and the fact that, you know, mobility first and, and contacts and relationships and the rest and how do we manage all this information? You know, we talked about YouTube, we're uploading 48 hours of content every day and we all get email inboxes full of hundreds of these things and, you know, if, if you're anything like me, you, have, you only have 168 hours in the week, right? So you want to watch the footy, you wouldn't mind having to surf, you probably see your wife, play with the kids, do other stuff. And incidentally, you have this inbox you got to manage. And if you're like anybody else as well, it's probably the first thing you look at in the morning, and it might be the last thing you look at at night. Actually, maybe I'm just being sad. I think it is just me. <laughs> but the, uh, it, it's a beast, and we all have to manage this thing. And, and the amazing thing at Google is that we're able to apply technology and, and intelligence around this to, uh, to, to make it better. So what if email was more intelligent and more social? So you think about when you go to Google search and, and it's almost magical when you type in, you know, what, what was the score for the Reds versus the, uh, the Crusaders? What was the Reds and Crusaders score? <laughs> on, on the weekend for the rugby and immediately all these, all these uh, answers come up on your screen. But you want to go and find a, a, a document on your intranet or, or find an email, uh, something within your email, it's, it's nearly impossible. Well, Taking those same signals that are being applied to Google search to Gmail, I can already understand that like when an email comes to me from Richard, our, our, our uh, sales director, or from Stuart, you know, it's important and I have to respond to it quickly, it recognizes that. If I get one from, from Anil or Hisham, it might go a little bit lower with all due respect guys. And you know, if I get one from a journo, it might be lower still. And it recognizes how quickly I respond and, and, a lot, and a whole bunch of different things within our algorithm. Now, that all sounds interesting, but think about when you go on holiday, and you come back and you have a thousand emails in your inbox. Wouldn't it be great if the 50 of them that you had to get to, that you knew were important, just percolated to the very top of your inbox? And that's what, that's what intelligent inboxes are all about, priority inboxes. And what if you had to go and, and do a forecast, you know, and Richard and I talk all the time, and you know, we're, we're pinging back and forth in the email world, and there's always, there's invariably a lag. You, know, you send the email off and you wonder if the guy's available. I can just look on the right-hand side in the window and see that, that Richard's online. There's a little green arrow next to his, his chat icon that says, I'm, I'm online. I can go into a chat session immediately, pull up a video, and we can have a real-time conversation. 
That's powerful and that's social. That's what we're, that's what we're talking about. And again, in this, in this world of, of social interactions and, and you know, you know, deeper relationships and, and managing work-life balance and the rest, and collaborating more importantly, it's about your relationships. We get lots more stuff done, and we see this in Google all the time because we know our colleagues. We interact with them on a more intimate way. I'm on a video chat. I can see their intonation. I can see their facial expressions. I'm running a meeting and asking for forecasts. I see when their eyes twitch. So I know that, that, that uh, we may not hit the forecast this, this quarter. But again, how do you use these tools to transform your people from just being contacts in, a, in, a, in, a, uh, in an address book to actual relationships? So what I thought would be useful is bring the guys back up again to show how this works in, in real time. All right. Thanks, Doug. Um, so in fact, Doug, you'll be happy to know that there was a study 43% of information workers, when they wake up in the morning, the first thing they do before they take a leak or they kiss their partner good morning is check their email. 43%. And I know, I know that's at least the number in this room. So it's, it's, it's really true about kind of getting to figure out what is the most important content. So if we can get the uh, Mac on both screens, please. So what we'll do is we'll just start with what, what uh, Doug talk, talked about which was the priority inbox. So what you can see here, for those of you who are familiar with Gmail, is your, your typical inbox, but here, rather than the 92 email messages that you normally have in your inbox, you're actually seeing only the sort of 17 here, just above the everything else bar. That's prioritized, so as, as Doug said, when I send him an email, it goes a little bit lower. When he sends me an email, it goes straight to the spam filter. So you've got these kind of different varieties of ways in which you can interact. And you can change these, right? You got little pluses and minuses right there at the top. So you can say, we've got over 100 different signals that are actually learning based on how you interact with your email. And I, I like to think of this as the reverse spam filter, right? If you remember when we came up with spam filters years and years ago, it was about how do you keep the garbage out? And this is actually the reverse of that, is how do you escalate the most important elements? And it's a really clever algorithm that does this. And um, I'll show you just the, the equivalent here of that in the mobile environment, just so you guys can see that, again, when we talk about mobile first, if we can just bring up that Elmo, please, again. Um, you can see here, and I know it's sometimes a little hard for both of you to everyone to see the screen, but again, if you look at that priority inbox, it is the exact same inbox as it is here. You've got the first two messages unread, you've got then the little indicators, yeah. the labels. So the idea is no matter where you are, no matter what device you are on, whether it's an, an iPad, a phone, a laptop, a Chrome OS box, you always have that same interface and that's really uh, pretty critical. So uh, why don't we do a quick demonstration of one of the powers of the cloud with translation. Yep. So I, I don't happen to speak French, but I have an email from a colleague here who does. You do speak French, though. You're lying. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> For the purposes of this demo, Neil, I do not speak French. Why would you lie? That's I temporary amnesia. Kind of temporary are. amnesia. To, okay, fine. Um, so we'll get the backup on this one as well, please. I have a message in French. I'll put it that way, okay. uh, and which I would like to translate for the benefits what of this audience. And so I can just hit the translate button, and bam, there it is in English. And so when we talk about the power of the cloud, this is something that's really interesting, right? So Hisham received an, uh, an email in a language he didn't speak. He pressed a single button, boom, he got it translated there in the real time. Here's the interesting thing, right? You're like, oh, yeah, 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 no problem. We can ship software. That can do that. But here's the amazing thing. Tomorrow, someone makes this great discovery around translation and realizes we can improve the quality of translation 500% just by doing these two little things. Tomorrow, when you read this email and you click the translate button, that translation is going to be 500% better. You didn't have to install a new piece of software. You didn't have to do a patch. The idea is these changes and these improvements continue to come through the power of the cloud. And that's really the most important thing to understand is, yes, software is powerful today, but how are you going to take advantage of what's really interesting two, three, four, five years from now without having to do the big, massive upgrade? And that's what we want to show here. Uh, with translation. So why don't we go ahead and um, let's see if you can find me online here. Yep. I'm going to go up here on my mobile. If we can get the Elmo again, please, on this side. And um, oh, you've already sent me a text. I'm on Hisham's phone, so clearly I've forgotten what the password yes. is. Anybody wants to know? Um, <laughs> How to unlock oh, wait, wait, wait. I, I remember what it Start is now. OK, so it's, yeah. So anyone steals this phone later, this is what the <laughs> password is, OK? OK, so we're going to go ahead here. I'm going to go and I'm going to launch uh, Google Talk. I actually got a notification in here. Right from Hisham. There you go. Hey, are you there? Okay. 
So you can see he's, having, he's in Gmail on his computer. I'm here on my mobile phone sitting on the train. I can go uh, yes on mobile. Right, so basically I'm saying to him, leave me alone. I'm pretty busy. I'm on the mobile phone. Go ahead. And so he says back to me, great, clearly I have time to chat. Okay, lovely. Thank you for that. You're welcome. It seems like you have time. Uh, yeah, right. I'm not busy at all. Okay, so he starts a video screen. So actually kind of watch on this side. It says, oh, you know what? Here's a video chat invite. Do you want to go ahead and accept that? And assuming that I'm actually on the wireless network, look at that. Here you go. If we can switch back to the Mac you know, on just both hold screens. That, hold that for me. Just have a conversation with him. He's really interesting. <laughs> so you can see. Hello, sir. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, good. How are you? Good. Have you tried that before? Is this, uh, what do you think? And? So you can see, you can do that obviously on your tablet. You can keep the phone, sir, if you'd like to know. I'll, I'll, I'll take that back. Thank you. <laughs> um, so you can see the, the, the power of no matter where you are, Again, being able to access, um, I think we might still be connected. Do you want to hang up? Yeah. Here it is. Beautiful. Um, so the power of being able to interact, again, from video conferencing. So again, 10 years ago, remember when video conferencing was the big thing? You'll never get on a plane ever again because we have video conferencing, and that proved not so much to be true. It's all about how hard it is to initiate a conversation. Right? And video conferencing is not about two people getting in a room, booking a time, figuring it out, getting the network working. But it's literally as simple as, oh, you're online, I'm online, click a button, boom, we're having a conversation. That's actually really, really powerful. All right, so the last thing we want to show here before we head back to Doug is Google Video. So we talked about a couple of different types of communication, right? We talked about one-to-one uh, -one or one-to-many, which you typically get in a... Uh, Gmail environment or you get in a video conferencing environment. We want to talk about many to many here, which is how do you actually use the power of sort of YouTube for your own business to take advantage of communication. And so what we've got here is just a few videos. Uh, Hisham will go ahead and click on one. You can see that it'll obviously play the video. You can rank the video with ratings. You can actually go ahead and see the scene breakdown. Um, there's a really interesting feature. There was research that so showed that we as humans can talk uh, sorry, we can, uh, we can comprehend a lot faster than we can talk. I'm sure all of you with how fast I'm talking are disagreeing with that. But for the most part, when people talk, you can actually listen faster. And so we've got this little turtle rabbit that basically says, okay, if the guy's talking too slow, just speed it up. And it'll actually allow you to watch the video at a faster speed. So it'll let you comprehend. At 1.5x, you can actually understand what they're That's, saying. Yeah, that made perfect sense. Um, so again, just think of this as kind of YouTube for your business. How do you communicate? Our, our president of enterprise actually uses this when he communicates his quarterly results as opposed to sending out an email. He actually literally takes, I was on the bad end of this once, he took, takes his laptop and he just walks out and he just pops into an office and he goes, Hisham, what did you do this quarter? Yeah. And you kind of respond to it and the next thing you know it's sent out to a thousand different people in the organization. So, um, but it's a really powerful way to communicate a message rather than just kind of text using visuals. So with that, we'll hand it back to Doug. What's up, guys? Thanks for that. So the future of work today, pretty, pretty amazing stuff. So again, we saw the, we saw the communication and collaboration, the, the power of video and video chats and, and making things more social and intelligent. The other thing, and I know lots of you in the audience are, are IT people, and clearly we're not invisible today, and, and there, are a lot of, there are a lot of IT folks out there, and we get asked this question all the time, like how do I, I don't want to become invisible, but I want to be transparent, or I want to be strategic, more strategic. And yeah, this is a really important issue in the, in the marketplace, because people are, are trying to figure out how to, how to take IT out of the back office and bring it into the sunlight and photosynthesize a little bit and, and contribute to the strategy of the business, rather than scurrying around with, with CDs or DVDs or whatever else and upgrading software and plugging in wires. Um, the reality is a lot of that stuff can be outsourced, and a lot of that stuff can be, can be leveraged um, so that you can go focus on your, on your core business. And there's some stunning stats out there. Um, I'm sure some of you have seen Gartner talking about, you know, in, in a short space of time, by end of next year, 20% of businesses will not have IT assets. And again, we're seeing that all the time, when if you're a startup, there's no need to buy a server to have an IT department. You can outsource lots of this stuff. And a great example that you hear about later from, from Ben White is, is Ray White, his company um, going, and, and going completely on the, on the platform, on the app exchange, sorry, the, uh, the app engine platform, 
to be able to leverage not just core Google Apps, but build their own bespoke applications that drive their internal operations, as well as all their different agency relationships. So becoming invisible, and, and more and more, what you're going to see is just like you know, companies like Salesforce or Workday or SuccessFactors and the rest, you're going to be able to, to cut and paste and, and to grab and subscribe to different applications that you normally could, you couldn't have used just a few years back. IT has been completely democratized. Now, the, all the, the functionality that only the big end of town used to be able to get, if you're a big bank or a, a big telco or whatever else, you could get a, a state-of-the-art you know, expense management system or HR tracking application. What you're seeing now is on these marketplaces, these SaaS vendors are amalgamating and getting together and providing subscription-based access to pull down a great expense management app. I mean, this stuff, it's not incredibly complex or sophisticated, but if you went out and tried to buy the software, you'd have to get all, all the stuff behind it and, and pay for it and maintain it. That's an expensive proposition versus paying a monthly fee, 40, 50 bucks or whatever, whatever it ends up being, which in this case, concur. So how, how many of you use other SaaS applications? Just out of curiosity. Okay, so I mean, it, it's, it's becoming very, very well accepted. And what you're going to see is more of these are going to be, again, joining and amalgamating in the marketplace. So another concept that we hear continually in the marketplace, and, and some stats that, that I found really compelling. How many of you are carrying the same phone that you carried a year ago? OK, so lots of us change devices, and we move, we move around from whether it's you know, an Android to an Apple or, or desktop to PC or whatever else. But the, the idea is that these devices should be, the device itself should be irrelevant. They should, it should be effectively um, disposable. But the, the reality is, is the expensive bit is the data that's sitting on top of it. And the fact is it costs lots of money to, to manage that data, and, and, and you need to have that protected. And you shouldn't have it embedded in, in the device itself. So think about these stats where 10% of corporate laptops are lost every year. Almost a million of them are lost in airports. And almost half of those contain confidential data. So you have all these devices floating around your organizations. You're spending huge sums of money paying for them, buying them, replacing them, and the rest. And every time they get lost, it costs you 25 grand in your organization. And forget about the device. That's irrelevant. It's all the confidential data that's been lost. It's you know, the time and expense to just recover the thing and, and uh, the loss of business and the time and the hardware. So that's a, that's a huge cost and, and, and a huge risk to the business. And so what we want to show today is something that we announced back in the US a couple of weeks ago at our, at our I.O. conference, is the, is the Google Chromebook. And the idea here is that you should just have a device. Uh, you know, it could be any, any form factor, but it looks a little bit like a laptop, the one we show you today. You flip the thing open. It boots up in eight seconds. There's no, app, there's no hardcore operating system sitting behind it. It just boots up to the number one application that you use almost 90% of the time that you're, that you're online, which is your browser comes directly into the browser. And so suddenly, the device that you're on becomes irrelevant. It becomes disposable. And this, again, huge cost savings um, opportunities here. When you buy a PC for your folks, or a laptop, or whatever, whatever the device is, it costs you a lot more money than you think. So estimates are, are, all, are, are sort, of, sort of vary. But roughly, 4,500, 4, 4, 4,600 bucks a year to maintain for end user costs, whether that's fixing downtime training, you've got the back office IT operations, the hardware, the admin stuff. All this overhead to have this one little box that incidentally gets lost 10% of the time, or you lose the data, or your guys leave. What if you could have an annuity-based model for the device that you're carrying around for 30 bucks a month? And you, get rid of, you, know, you can actually get rid of the thing after a year or two and trade it in for another device. You would have more productive users. It would be easier to manage. It would be more secure. And your total cost of ownership becomes really compelling. So again, what we're talking about here is just fundamentally transforming the way that we see the cloud evolving through the device. So would we like to have Anil come back and have, give us a look? All right. Thanks, Doug. All right. So. Keyshawn's going to open up his machine there. We're going, to get the, uh, we're going to get the Mac back up on both of these. So we talked to you about a lot of the different things that you can do in the cloud, right? So let's say that Hisham is kind of sitting there working in his particular environment. Maybe what are you going to do? Do a, you want to do a drawing? Oh, doing a drawing. You said I was working, right? You were working, right? Oh, so you're, you're drawing stuff. That's great. Is that what marketing does? You guys draw stuff? Ouch. <laughs> 
All right, so you're drawing stuff. You're drawing a happy face. And now most of you don't know this, but I actually have a criminal background. So, um, so I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to go, oh, yeah, no, I'm just going to no. grab this. Yeah, we'll take that guy out. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to steal your machine. I, I like that machine. I, it's okay, you um, don't, but it's gone now. We don't talk, right? I'm a criminal. Um, all right, and so over here, I'm just going to sell this. Anybody want this? 10 bucks? 10? 20? 20? 30? 30, 30, 30, really? 40? 40? Okay, anyone? 50? It's, it's a Mac. Five. 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 We're going down. The auction's going backwards. This is not helping me, right? So, so what are you going to do? I'm going to cry over my Mac for a second. I'm going to ask Jeremy to actually lend me his machine uh, and get uh, right back to where I was uh, going. Jeremy keeps his machine in a FedEx box. Thank you, Jeremy. <laughs> it's very interesting. It's a handy storage <laughs> spot. Not sure why that happens, but all right, let's just, let's just run with it. So um, really what we're trying to demonstrate here is that what, what Doug already talked about, right, is this idea that when you're working in a cloud-based environment, your machine becomes irrelevant, right? It's merely the way in which you actually access your work. But what machine that particular is? And so we're going to show this Chrome. Is this up? All right, we're going to show this. It's like Kishamb has never touched this machine. This is Jeremy's machine. So you saw how fast that loaded. Yep. So he's going to go in and say, oh, I'm a new guy. So I'm just going to sign in for the first time. Right? And if this machine was, blind, it was a brand new machine, it would just load up this way and you can immediately just sign in. And as we talked about, in a matter of a few seconds, up to a minute as it sets up your first thing, it's going to take a picture of him, smile. Beautiful. I like it. I like it. It's like my mugshot. Yeah, I'm, he's a criminal. Um, so, so what this is really about is about getting up and running quickly. Let me tell you an example. I found this really interesting. Um, there's a company in the States by the name of Groupon. Most of you probably know it. They're, they're in the kind of offers-based space. You feel free to have a look at what, what Hisham's doing. He's kind of getting up and running. I'm going to get back to that drawing. They actually don't give their employees machines. What happens is you walk in in the morning, and you go in, and you check out a machine. You go to your desk. You work for the day. And when you leave, you go back, and you put your machine back in. And then you go home. Because they recognize a lot of their staff isn't in and out of the office all the time. And so they could say, OK, we can give all 500 people a single machine. Or we know at any given point in time, there's about 200 people in the office. So we're just going to have 200 machines in stock. When you walk in the office, here's your machine. You open up your Chrome OS box, you log in, you do your work for the day, you close it down, you give it back. It doesn't matter, you get a different machine every day. Because all of your information, all your data, all your happy smile face drawings that you marketing people do are in the cloud. Right? And that's the power of these devices, is that you really have access to it no matter where you are. Um, and all of your content and all of your data is there. And as, as Doug talked about, with theft, with people losing it, with spilling water on your machine, really, from a security perspective, this is huge. And as an administrator for these devices, you can actually control what are the apps that the user has access to when they actually log into their machine? What are the extensions that are installed? What's the password elements that when they open up their machine, how often do they have to log in? So as an administrator, you have real security privileges over how all of these machines on your network work, really making sure that none of your core intellectual property. Uh, IHG, the big hotel chain, uses this quite a bit for all of their, um, their, all of their staff who work at the front of the, of the hotel. Because again, you're not always on the same machine. It doesn't really matter. But if you want to get to your email or anything else, airlines are starting to use this. Anytime you have people in the field, this is a huge value proposition. So what we want to talk about now is the, uh, the last point that, that Doug touched on, which was the marketplace, the idea that there are applications and there's extensions. Um, so what you can see, when you get an app in the marketplace and you add it, what Hisham was showing there is you got this kind of list of all the apps that you add. We've got a principle at Google that's, that's called um, our apps, your apps, third party apps. And the idea is we talked to you today about all the things that Google does with respect to Google apps. And that's great. But there are a lot of particular applications that no doubt within your organization are critical. And you can use our developer platform, a Google App Engine, to build apps that interact with Google Apps and that focus on things core to your business, potentially behind the firewall. But then the third bucket is apps that third parties build that extend our services. So for example, here we're looking at uh, Social Walk. Sorry, um, let me switch back. There you so go. So Social Walk is basically about bringing social elements, the, the corporate Facebook. We've all sort of heard this terminology, right? So here you have this stream of information that you can interact with. You can post news articles. You can look at people's calendars, what documents they've looked at. And you can interact. You know, here you can, uh, he's going to auto-complete. You can add me. He can send me a note. Um, it's all about 
being able to bring sort of the Facebook elements, but within your corporation to be firewalled. So it's a great application by Social Walk. You can add it to your Google Apps account. And again, this is all about the ecosystem of apps that exist. Another great example is uh, Run My Process. Uh, many of you as organizations use workflow. And we've got some workflow elements within Google Apps, but sometimes you might be looking for some more sophisticated workflow processes. And the Run My Process app actually lets you use a series of libraries, designs, interactions with CRMs, Oracle, SAP, all of these very interesting and important backend systems that you probably use, and use Google Apps as a front end to bring those processes and workflow elements together. So this, again, another really powerful workflow app that is in our third party marketplace that you can go ahead and purchase and, and bring into your system. And the final one we'll show you is, is Concur um, Breeze. So this is uh, obviously a very big company in the space of expense uh, management. And we use this actually at Google. It's really great about kind of interacting with your account system, interacting with your user base for creating expense reports, filing them, approving them, et cetera. So you might say, oh, well, Google doesn't have an expense report system, or Google doesn't have an HR system, or Google doesn't have a project management, so Google Apps can't work for me. And really what we want to talk to you about and make sure you understand is we've, I don't know if you brought up the marketplace, but if you haven't, let's, let's do that. We have a massive ecosystem of third-party developers who have understood that everything you can do on a local machine, you can actually do in the cloud now. We've seen video games, right, Quake, 3D, in the cloud, on the browser. There's, it's amazing. So all of these different types of productivity apps, project management, et cetera, are all available for you to add onto the apps ecosystem. So a really powerful platform um, from that perspective. So the last thing I want to add before we, we go away is we pulled up that machine. It's pretty sexy. That's the Chromebook. Um, and we're, uh, Doug has agreed to give one away. He has now. <laughs> All right, so um, before you guys, when you walk out of the room uh, before the networking session, please fill in the feedback forms that you should have and kind of put them in, uh, into the box. And then uh, during the networking session, we'll go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll draw one of those and we'll give you a, a brand new in its box, sealed, so new, no criminal like me can get to it, uh, Chromebook. Uh, so with that, thank you guys very much. Look forward to talking soon. Back to Doc. This is a laptop. This is a computer. This has the web. That's weird. OK, so it's the web. There are no programs. So there's nothing to start up. Then how do I do stuff? There's no messy desktop. So no rolling hills of green. Can I use it anywhere? On a unicycle? My calendars, emails, documents. Everything can be saved to the web. That's crazy. So I could throw this thing into a river. And I won't lose my stuff? It doesn't need virus protection. What about annoying updates? Or patches. Or patches for the patches. So it gets better in real time. I wonder if people are ready for this. It's kind of a new thought. So the Chromebook, an amazing device. And again, we, we showed this at, at our I.O. conference in San Francisco a couple weeks back. And you know, they've actually been flying off the shelves. We're working with uh, Samsung and Acer to start off with. But a whole bunch of equipment manufacturers are coming up with these things. So stay tuned for, for some big rollouts and more, and more news about that. But again, the, the key element about, and, and probably the, the main takeaway about the Chromebook and about leveraging the cloud is, is the whole notion that it just makes work better. It makes the future of work real. And one of the things that I, that I found that has always held things back to a certain extent, and, and every sales meeting that I go to and that all of us go into, the first thing they ask us is, what about security? Why, you know, how do you guys secure the data in the cloud? And how do we know what your, what your servers are up to? And then, but 
what I put back to you and what I, what I hope is a takeaway from today is that the cloud is the solution to the security issue. It's not the problem. So whether you use our cloud, which we hope you will, or other SaaS providers, the folks that have built this sort of infrastructure, we've spent billions of dollars. We have the best engineers on the planet. We've got you know, amazing redundancy and facilities all over the world distributed to be able to manage all this, all this stuff and to be able to deploy things like Chromebooks, to be able to take away your worries for security. Because guess what? There are huge vulnerabilities in your organizations. Forget about all the USB sticks that go missing or the laptops that you might lose or the malicious, the malicious employee that might you know, get into your server for whatever reason. The fact is, the more that we can protect this stuff and the more that you can rely on vendors whose business it is to, to protect your data, the more secure you're going to be. So again, and, and the thing that's really interesting that we're finding is that there's a huge groundswell here, that people are seeing you know, the Wintel or the, the, the Microsoft PC franchise under threat. You know, this, this represents a, a, a quantum change in the way people are thinking about devices. So definitely fill out, your, fill out your forms and hopefully one of you can take one home and they'll be ready in the market here in the next, in the next month or so. So we'll, we'll, do the, we'll do the feedback forms. Uh, what I'd like to do now is just sort of wrap up. It's, it's been a while. We've been on stage here for, for a little over an hour. So thanks for your, for your time and, and your uh, engagement and your attention. Hopefully another you know, key takeaway is understanding the vast array of, of functionality and capability that's with Google Apps. But more importantly, understand that this is a movement. You know, very much like Sergey Brin talks about Google not being a company but a movement. You know, Google Apps and moving to the cloud, it's all, it is happening at an incredible rate. And being able to leverage things like Gmail and Docs, Calendar, Sites, Video, you know, and security in the back end is, is, a, is amazing value for your business. And then as you go downstairs and you might ponder over a coffee, understand that, that uh, Starbucks is not really doing especially well here in, in Australia. So go to your favorite coffee vendor. Maybe, maybe there's some correlation between the coffee vendor and the PC vendor that, uh, that's, or the, the, the um, operating system vendor. But think about as you sip that, sip that coffee that you will be paying more for that coffee than you would have for a month's usage of, of Google Apps. So huge cost savings, huge benefit for your business. And um, again, call to action. No cost to just try this stuff out, give it a go. Go online, have a trial. We run workshops just about every month out of our office. So come by, talk to the Googlers, see our wacky office, play some air hockey if you like, and uh, we'll, show you how, we'll show you how this stuff works. So again, thanks for your time and attention. Uh, looking forward to, to chatting with you one-on-one. -on -one. Please talk to our partners. <laughs> Sorry, I'll let you read that one. Talk to our partners, enjoy the coffee, and then we've got uh, probably the, the crux of the show which is coming up, which is our, um, our partner panel. So again, please come back in about a half an hour's time, and uh, we hope to, to wow you with some great customer, local customer stories. <laughs>